Chiang Bay, a very difficult orchid to film. I hope I'm going to be able to do it justice. It's a cross between Usitana and Speciosa. And as you can see on here, it is a sequential bloomer. Each individual node reflects a bloom where it bloomed before. And in this case, I am on my eighth bloom with this spike. And we have another one coming in the back. And as it's getting hotter, I wonder when it's going to blast. I'm not looking forward to that. I do want to see how long I can do this and keep this up. So it is very thirsty during this time period. And uh, last year I only managed to get three blooms. So it's doing a bit better. I'm going to now remove it from its shelf and show you how it's potted up and what I do for it here in my Mediterranean climate. But let's have a look at how it looks from the front. If you stick your nose in there, you will think you've walked into a dusty room that hasn't been aired for a while. It's not a bad smell. It's just like, oh, you just want to open the curtains and let some air in and then the room is fine again. So it's not an off-putting smell. But it is, uh, you have to stick your nose in. You can't just, you know, think, you, it, it's not a strong fragrance. But I just find the structure is remarkable. And I still have it living inside simply because of this spike. Because I want to see how many blooms I can get as a reference. So I'm just going to take the whole pot down now and let's have a look at it with a little bit more detail to the leaves. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's like a piano timer or a music timer. So here you see the spike, how long it is in comparison to the plant as it goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up. It comes out of the node as the new growth grows. This is its leaf pertaining to that new growth. Quite a substantial leaf this year. And then the pseudobulbs, I don't know, they look like mini zucchinis, gherkins, <laughs> but not as rough. They're quite smooth. They're not rough. So I'm not sure if this is the maximum of a bulb size that I can grow. It is in Lekka only, and it is also quite a thirsty plant when it's like this. It has to sustain that long spike now. It has to make the bloom and up, uh, keep up the bud. You can see that last year's growth wasn't as large, so that's probably why the bloom didn't last as long. However, I'm going to turn it around now. I'm going to make another clip so that I don't do all the nasty wiggle jiggle. A little appreciation and closer look of the bloom from behind with its new bud on the way. I love the color. It's suitably, suitably named by calling it Lime Bay. The bloom will fade into sort of a creamy yellow, faded yellow once it gets older and before it starts to drop. And then one morning you wake up and poof, it's on the floor. It takes about two and a half to three weeks. So you calculate back eight buds and blooms and it'll take you all the way into like November when it started blooming. So let me see if I can show you now what's going on. It is starting on a new growth. And of course, it's starting right at the back of the pot, which is a bit annoying, but you know what? That's easily remedied. And I will take you along for the ride when I take this lime bay out and reposition the plant in the pot with the new growth and hopefully the new spike intact. As much as I want that spike to stay on for as long as possible, it will also give us an opportunity to see if it can handle a repot, repositioning, little unicorn in the back, and a disturbance of its roots while working on a spike.
So we'll have to see about that. I'll, I'll take you along when the time comes and then we can monitor its progress and see how it does. In the summer, it normally lives outside, but again, because of the bud, I don't want to move it. And in the winter, of course, I keep it inside lots. It has the highest of light without um, di direct sunshine because of the leaves, I don't want to scorch them. So my temperatures in summer can go above 30 degrees Celsius with 30% humidity. That's why it is in Lekan self-watering because I can maintain humidity around the plant. And my winters can go down to 10 degrees, 5 degrees at night outside and inside it maintains a steady temperature of 16 lowest, if not more. But lowest would be 16 inside. And I do not use a humidifier. I don't have any kind of equipment to support its growing or cultivation needs other than what I'm doing for it right now. So if this helps you, then wonderful. And let me know if you have it and if you have a similar fragrance as I do. And how do you grow it? Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was interesting. And let's see this one on the next time we see it. I will be taking it out of its pot and repositioning it so that it has more room to grow now that I know where it's headed. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Bye.